Okay, so far we've been demonstrating exploits using Backtrack 5 and Metasploit that are remote attacks. Uh, exploits that target a server or service on the network and then try to exploit it. But there's also client-side attacks where you set up the server and a client visits your server and a payload is basically requested by the victim and once the victim um, receives the web page or a file on the web page then the attack is executed. It's a lot trickier to do that because you never know the operating system that the client might have or the browser that the client might have or the types of um, how up-to-date their system might be and to preventing your attack. So um, I've been trying to get a client-side attack working all day to work with this client that I have here, which is a um, Windows XP Pro Service Pack 2 computer. You can see here that I'll just show it to you. All right, XP Professional Service Pack 2. Okay, and I think I found one, so we'll try this out right now. Okay. Um, Okay, so you can see the client here is at 4.104, uh, the IP address. And now we'll um, open up a terminal. And what we'll do is we'll launch the MSF console. Okay, the console is opened up. And now we're going to search through... Um, search through our exploits and I was looking for an exploit um, with the word browser in it so that we could find um, an, an exploit that targeted a browser so you could see here that there's a number of exploits that all have browser in their name and the key is to find one that's going to work for the type of um, operating system and browser that's going to be opening up this um, web server that you're going to be setting up. So I believe I found one and I'll just show you here. I decided to try out the Windows Browser MS10046 shortcut icon DLL loader. Okay, so we'll hit enter and then I chose a payload let's see here of a generic just shell reverse TCP so a generic shell essentially that will come back to us from the client alright and now what we need to do is look at the options and when we look at the options we see that we need to set the um, server port, which is already right now set to 80, so that's fine. The URL path um, is a forward slash, and it says do not change. So we'll keep it at that. We need to set a listening host and a server host address to tell um, the exploit to load in our IP address so that it can connect back to us. So um, I can run an if config to double check my IP address and I can see that it is 4.150 so now all I have to do is let's see here I'll up arrow I've already got it set up here set the um, server host there we go and now I will also set the listening host I'm just up arrowing to it there it is set the L host to 4.150 and I believe that's all we need now um, I'm going to now just type exploit and it should set up the server okay exploit running as a background job tells us that it started the reverse handler and, and it tells us the um, the URL to use so the URL to use is our IP address on port 80 so no problem. So now I'll just go to my client and I'll pull this over here. Put this over here so we can see it as we bring it up and open up an Internet Explorer browser. I'll stop that and put in the IP address. All right, there it is, 4.150. Hit enter and you can see instantly that the server has started and it's got the connection from the client and you can see that it's responding 
and it says a command shell is open. You can see over here on the client, um, we now have uh, a browser window, and you can see a DLL file that was basically launched. Now, if we look in our shortcut window here, it says we have a command shell session opened. So all we have to do now is hit enter. We're going to type sessions dash L to list them out. You can see here that we have a session, an active session, shell windows, right? And it's session one right here. Shows you the computer that we have a session with. So we'll do session, sessions dash I for interact one. We do that and boom, we're given a shell. There is our C drive. Um, we can put a DIR command and see our desktop files. And we're now interact interacting with the client computer. So there was a, an example of a client side attack. We set up an exploit in a server and then we're waiting for the client to contact us. And if a client does contact us, then our exploit is launched. Okay, so I just exited out of the shell, and um, what I hope you walk away with from, from seeing this example is how easy that was to all of a sudden be given root access to somebody's computer. All we had to do was visit a web page in our browser, in our, um, here's the, the, the Internet Explorer browser. Now granted, this is an older operating system. It's Windows XP Pro, and this is an older version of Internet Explorer, so it's, they're both very vulnerable. But basically, still, regardless, all we had to do was visit a web page, um, and this could be erringly just visiting the wrong website, and without our knowing it, practically instantly, um, somebody's given root access or administrative access to our system. And so uh, this type of uh, client-side attack is, could be, can be pretty dangerous. And how many people do we know personally who've gotten viruses on their systems, usually by going to a website and, um, or from an email and downloading some file and um, clicking on some link on the, on the web, and which launching a program on our computer and then giving us this virus. So this is the type of thing that is, um, affects computers every day, uh, client-side attack.